everyone. We are now going to go over the peripheral blood flow cytometry from a five-year-old boy with leukocytosis and numerous peripheral blood blasts. Let's start with CD45 versus side scatter. The lymphocytes painted in dark blue have bright CD45 expression and low side scatter. Very few monocytes are here, which are indicated by bright CD45 and slightly higher side scatter. The granulocytes, which are painted in orange, have very high side scatter and um, dimmer CD45 than the monocytes and lymphocytes. And we see a scant population of granulocytes here because um, the entire peripheral blood is largely replaced by a large number of blasts, which account for 72% of the cells analyzed here. And they sit at the blast gate, which is indicated by dim CD45 and low side scatter. Now let's follow through the blast to look at what is the phenotypic expression. In the CD34 versus 33 plot, the blasts are negative for both 34 and 33. They're negative for 117. They're negative for HLADR. They're positive for CD38, negative for CD13, negative for CD15, negative for 11B, negative for 14 and 64. So there's a small population which is positive for both 14 and 64. This could be contamination with the monocytes or um, because of their shape, it could even indicate that these are debris, but I don't see a similar shape in the other plots. So possibly they are just monocytes. These blasts are negative for CD56 and CD16. So, so far we see that they are negative for the myeloid markers, CD117, CD33, CD13, CD15, and they're negative for monocytic markers, CD11B, CD64, uh, CD14, and they're negative for 16 and 56. In fact, they are also negative for HLADR and CD34. I mean, um, the morphology of the peripheral blood suggests that these are blasts, but so far we don't even have any maturity marker. They are just positive for 38 until now. <clears throat> now, going on to the T cell tube, we see that they express CD7. They're negative for cytoplasmic CD3. They are negative for CD2. They're negative for CD4 and CD8. They express partial CD5. So we have CD, um, the T cell marker CD7 and partial CD5 but we don't have cytoplasmic, uh, sorry, the surface CD3. We have to perform a cytoplasmic CD3 to see if these are T-cell blasts because seven and five, as you remember, are not specific for T-cell lineage. They can be expressed in other lineages as well. CD19 is negative and CD20 and 10 are negative. So they do not express B-cell markers. So, so far the initial or the screening panels did not give us an answer. They are only positive for 38, seven, and partial five. So now we have to add on um, extended tubes to see if there is um, expression of any other lineage markers like erythroid or myokaryocytic. And we, have, we also have to do the cytoplasmic CD3 to see if these are T lymphoblasts. Tube four is a megakaryocyte and erythroid tube. So we see um, in this tube CD36, glycophorin, CD41, A, and CD61. So 36 um, is positive in erythroblasts and megakaryoblasts, but it is not specific. It can also be positive in monoblasts. You should remember that. However, our blasts are negative for 36 and they're negative for glycophorin. So we see a small number of cells here, but remember the blasts, um, the, have expressed dim CD45 and um, the erythroblasts also express dim to negative CD45. So there could easy, easily be some contamination from the erythroids here, which are sitting here usually. So these could be just normal erythroids at the background and may not be our main blast population. Oh, and also our population is pretty distinct and uh, is definitely negative here. And um, in CD61 and 41A, we see that these blasts are negative for 61. CD41A, there is a slightly dim expression, um, maybe partially in a subset of blasts, which is very suspicious. So in this particular case, um, IHC was also, immunohistochemistry chemistry was also performed on the bone marrow for the megakaryocytic markers and they proved to be negative. So this is just non-specific staining and it is um, not, 
uh, considered positive. So when you see something like this, this is definitely suspicious. And also in a case like this, where everything else is negative, it warrants additional workup. So it is always better to do another method of um, staining like your immunohistochemistry to see what the phenotype is. And when we go to our cytoplasmic T cell tube, these blasts, which are painted in royal blue, they are negative for CD3 and TDT. So you see a small number of cells here that are cytoplasmic CD3 positive. So these could be just T cells. So if you see uh, where our blasts are sitting in this particular 45 versus side scatter plot, they're very close to lymphocytes. So it is very hard to kind of avoid contamination by the lymphocytes in this gate. So these could be just some background T cells that are there. Um, so how do you know that these are not blasts because they're negative for cytoplasmic TDT and CD34. So they essentially don't have any immaturity markers. So they're just T cells that are in the background. And um, our blasts are also negative for CD1A and they're negative for MPO. So, so far we only have CD7 positive D, 5 positive D without any cytoplasmic CD3 positive D. So this, these are not T cells. And again, these are not myeloid. These are not erythroid or megakaryocytic or monocytic. So when we see something like this, it qualifies for undifferentiated leukemia. So we can call this as acute undifferentiated leukemia. So acute undifferentiated leukemias, they arise from the very early hematopoietic progenitors, which have not committed themselves to any of the lineages. And these early hematopoietic progenitors can be positive for CD7 <clears throat> and often express them CD7, which is why acute undifferentiated leukemias often have CD7 expression. They do not indicate that these are T lymphoblasts. You always need the lineage specific marker which is cytoplasmic or surface CD3 to call these T lymphoblasts. And um, when you report this, you can call it acute indifferentiated leukemia, and you have to give the percentage of plus and also the detailed phenotype because this helps in follow up. Other thing that you have to remember is um, in cases like this, we also make sure that we rule out uh, BPDCN, which is the blastic plasmocytoid dendritic cell neoplasm. So these express CD123, 56, and 4. So here we can see that our 56 expression is negative and also 4 expression is negative. So <clears throat> we did not perform the CD123 tube uh, to see if it is BPDCN. But um, if you are suspicious, you can always add on that and make sure you eliminate BPDCN also. Thank you.